Rise ye ash and tarnish chosen undead and welcome souls fans new and loyal to your next installment of the demon souls platinum all achievement easy to follow guide so the last video we spent 26 minutes farming to get our stats where we want them vitality to 25 intelligence to 10 endurance to 20 magic to 10 and faith to 16 that's what we did now that we've completed that, the other thing we did was on our arrows, we got light arrows to a healthy 300 amount, as we're going to use those arrows for the remainder of the game. We'll buy normal every now and again just to avoid having to jump to world 4 to get them from Grave Robber, but realistically what we want is light arrows. Right, come around here. Sage Freak, who we freed in World 3-2. Hmm. I have Could you, as I, a demon. You have your And we're going to learn magic. We are going to purchase Water Veil for 500. There you go. There is Sorcery number 1 of 22. And trade the Doll Demon Soul for Soul Ray. And there's Sorcery 2 of 22. Don't worry about the rest for now, but what you want to do is attune Water Veil. Bring me more. We have a rather nasty fire boss coming up, and Water Veil is going to help soak up a lot of that fire damage. With that done, nearly forgot to put my Kling Ring back on. Kling Ring back on, and we're going to go back to the Lord. Oh, repair. Let's repair. I can forge weapons for you. You come back alive. And now we're going to go to World 1 to the Lord's Path. This time to complete this section, including the Tower Knight boss, who we are also going to get the bonus trophy for defeating him a very specific way. I'm going to put on the Providential Ring any time I fight these phalanxes, just as a chance to get some more hard stone shards for our bow. It's not an issue, we are going to get some crystal lizards, so... But since we're going to fight these guys anyway, and they are farmable for these shards, we might as well try and maximize our chances. Sharp stone, boo. Ooh, large hardstone, yay. Yeah. Don't worry about getting hit by them, they don't deal much damage at all. These, I believe, are throwing knives. Yep, absolutely not needed. So we can send those straight to storage. We have a bow for that. And let's send all of our materials to storage. Weapon, the Epe Rapier can go. We don't have any extra armor. Make sure we keep the gold mask. We need that for a crow trade. And there we go, that's just our inventory. Kept at a nice level. Come on, round here, up the steps for some grass. Got some grass, man. And then down we go to speak with Ostrava. Hello, look at me. Clear out the soldiers, the Lord's path. Cool. We have to complete his quest line so that we get the mausoleum key. Mausoleum, mausoleum. Mausoleum. We are English after all. Right, you can see these charred bodies. That's a warning of things to come. Once the dragon has started, don't pick up any items. Just run up. Here. Pop this 
Spearman. Got the Axeman. Send the wooden catalyst to storage. And what I like to do here, control the settings, precision aim, make it press. And what that means is you don't have to hold the button anymore. As what we're going to be doing is each time the dragon comes around, we're just going to get an arrow into it. This is going to take somewhere in the maybe 10 minute range, I believe. Uh, I'm being slow on my triggers. You can get two arrows here. So let's go to two. Fire. Fire, there we go. Two per round. I'm using long arrows. controller's gonna make the noise when the arrow hits so that way you know that you hit. So I missed it. Oh. Why am I trigger on this controller might be going? That's better. Dragon. So, and this is the reason why we wanted the bow to be upgraded. Not so much for the uh, the skeleton wraith summoner thing uh, for the level farm. It is for this dragon. So, of it. secondary missed on that one. Mm -hmm. That's better. So all I'm doing is I'm just spamming the attack for the second arrow to make sure the second arrow goes through.
little more. <coughs> one or two passes, maybe? I don't think it'll be one, so two. And if I think two, it'll be three. <laughs> For some reason, it dies in the distance. So you'd be sat here aiming, and then suddenly, randomly, the the, the dragon soul will pop into your inventory, and the souls will come up. And, oh, there you go, just like that. Small scaled flame demon soul. Now we're actually going to. We didn't kill this dragon for the souls. We killed the dragon so we can go and get this stuff from earlier. Um, right, what are we doing? We are... We're going... No, we'll do with a Strava separately. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was just checking my notes because I know in two different runs I did this in two different orders. I'm going to send that winged spear to storage before I forget. Now, you can, when World 1 gets to pure white tendency, the dragons disappear anyway. So there is an argument for you don't need to snipe the dragon, um, albeit that you, you do get you know, a, a respectable amount of stole, uh, souls. Still a providential one. Should have put the thief ring back on. Not too late. I know we're killing phalanxes, however, it's only these three. And. We don't want to get mobbed by basic dregs, plus, we've got the soldiers coming up. Like that guy and this guy who's gonna fire this. Out here. And now we're back to the dragon bridge. With no more dragon. So we are going to have to earnestly pop these, but thanks to the thief ring. We're not going to aggro the entire bridge. And thanks to our extra endurance, we can just uh, take some hits from these world of enemies. I use the uh, basic grass here to heal because it's going to become redundant soon where the amount of health we have and the amount of damage we take you're going to have to drink, uh, eat so much grass to make up for it that it's just not efficient anymore. So, while health is low and while damage is low, using the basic grass is a great thing to do because you're not going to miss it later on. Okay, careful with the grey dragon. So, you can grab this item, flame resistance ring, 
that is ring number 13 of 30. What we're then going to do, shield up, we're going to trigger. Ow. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> right. Trigger the tail slam, then come and get the ring of great strength. There we go. Ring of great strength, ring number 14 of 30. So both of those we want for world two. Uh, the flame resistance ring, as I mentioned, we have a fire boss coming up. So flame resistance is very good. And the ring of great strength is the equivalent of the Havel's ring from previous, uh, from other Souls games, which means we can equip onto ourselves more goodies and maintain our good role. So we're going to do that because we're going to get our nice chonky main weapon that's going to see us through the rest of the game. Now we've got that, we are going to head back to the Dragon Bridge that we were just on. Up to you. I mean, you can obviously rest if you really want to, but then you're respawning the enemies that you've already popped. You won't respawn the dragon, but you shouldn't need to do a rest. Uh, any MP you've spent on the heal miracle, having the falchion equipped is going to restore that. So you can see I'm nearly at full MP. And HP, you can just use your heal miracle and your basic grass to recover. And there we go, we're back. Now time to help out Ostrava. And to do that, this time we're going to come down into the tunnels underneath. Hang a left. And then once you get to this wooden bit, be prepared for a drag ambush. After this one, there you go, as I say, be prepared for two, two crossbowmen. And this one shouldn't actually aggro, which is interesting. grab the gash resistance ring. Uh, so that one is ring 14. Sorry, uh, my notes were incorrect. So flame resistance was number 12. Ring of great strength was number 13. Gash resistance is number 14. Blue-eyed knight curious is heavy as anything. So let's immediately send that to storage. Thank you. Time to forge ahead. Get some dark moon grass from Ostrava. This is bad. How did this... And he's now going to continue his little journey. As we are going to continue ours. So that's where we came down. We're now going to cross into the next area. Don't grab the item. It's a trap because there is a dreg in the shadows. Pop him first, then you can grab the hero soul. And then Thief Ring is going to come in clutch here as we are going to inch forward and we're going to fight these four dogs one at a time rather than getting more fight at once. Oh, five dogs. 
Grab the grass. Pop the crossbow, man. And just pointing out, so here is your merchant. So this is the merchant that was in an, uh, the World 1-1 one -one near where we first met Ostrava. But we don't need anything from that merchant, so... Up the steps. Back on yourself. Up again, and th there are two archers here. Compound short bow, while well, we've got our long bow. I'm just gonna send any bolts, send those, because crossbows are garbage in my opinion. Short bow, we don't need that, so we can send that as well. I'm going to send that because it's heavy and we don't need the full heals anytime soon. Drag and sh spike shields, any of those that you pick up can go as well. There we go. Onward. Through the fog, there's just going to be more bridge. The plus side is now we don't have to worry about the dragon. Which importantly means when we get to the top of this bridge, we are still going to have stamina. Blop, blop, <laughs> bop, the blue-eyed knight. And as you see, there's some archers shooting from up there. Thankfully, the thief ring means they're not going to shoot that often. So you'll notice there, because he bounced off the shield, that makes him impervious to backstabs for a period of time. Don't go through the fog yet. Two-hand, come up here. Crystal Lizard will give you hard stone, possibly sharp stone shards. But we're not worrying if we miss out on any hard stone, because now we know how we can farm it from my farming video. The one directly before this. Grab the soul, grab the lotus. Take off the small grasses and put on full. So I have full and late as my only grasses. As we are about to fight an enemy that does chunky damage. And if you're not familiar with the game, you will very quickly see why. Uh, so late is the one that I want on. Because that is the small of the healing items. Full is for if I'm nearly dead. Make sure you have your Thief Ring equipped. That is so critical for this Tower Knight fight. So, you're fighting the Tower Knight, but you're also... There are archers 
all around the top. The thief ring, if we come here, in this section at the top of the steps, we will not get shot at by the archers. Now the bonus trophy here is for defeating the tower knight without, without defeating the archers. So what we're going to do, when he does his shield spam, we're going to go ham on his leg. And now for the other one. Oop. Ow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. that one, because I'm right in front of him. And all we're doing... There we go. Enough damage to his ankles. So he collapses, and then... Oh no! Oh, you're joking! Stupid! Oh, we're going to have to do it again! He blocks the head, so headshots do... we would have killed him, basically. Uh, his head is his weak spot. Ow. Get up. It wouldn't be one of my guides if something didn't happen unexpectedly, so... Oh, there we go. Okay, he's dead. Two hands. And there you go. We go whale. So you chop up the Achilles, make him fall over, and then two hand whale on the head and he's dead. There we go. Trophy number eight. The Tower Knight trophy and trophy number nine one shall fall which is for defeating him without defeating the archers first come up grab the warrior soul up here for late moon grass And after that, it's optional drops from the archers themselves. But those are the two items that we want to grab from up top. Gonna put on my lesser grasses again. Touch the arch stone. Send the iron demon soul. To storage so that we don't spend that un uh, so we don't spend that accidentally and head back to the Nexus. So spend the small scale, the one that we got from the dragon, we spend that, we don't need that for any boss stuff. 10,000 souls, worth a few minutes of arrow spamming, and spend the rest of the consumable souls that we have accumulated. Accumulate, accumulated. Level up two levels into vitality to get it to 27. I can forge weapons. Repair. Do come back alive. And now World 1 is now in pure white tendency, you'll see on the left there. And we're going to go to 1-1, one, one, the gates.
And now, because of pure white, this gate is now open. So, two hand, ignore the phantoms that are about to spawn. We're going straight for the crystal lizard. So red phantom enemies are the same as their normal counterparts, only they deal more damage and have more health. Grab the grass, grab the unknown warrior souls. The red phantom enemies here always drop basic grass, the crescent moon ones. So if you do want to farm crescent moon grasses, you can come here and they will spawn. Up here, edge forward, there are five in total. I just like to do deal with them as a two and a three, rather than all five of those. Okay, grab the grass that they drop. Do not continue. Now, if we continue in pure white, there is an NPC aggressor that is around that corner there. However, she is in human form. She is not a red phantom. And what that means is, if we kill her, our character tendency is going to decrease. Uh, it is also going to decrease the world tendency, which we kind of want that to happen, but we do not want our character tendency to decrease yet. So we're gonna leave her alone. Come to the top of the stairs here, and what we're going to do is we're going to force our souls to respawn closer to us. And all we're going to do now is we're going to run and die. And we're going to start bringing World 1 towards pure black tendency, as the white tendency event that we needed was for that gate to open. So you'll see at the moment it's still pure white, and that's because dying does not reload tendency. And we're going to take full advantage of that in a moment in World 2. And there you go, there's our souls. But what we're going to do is we're going to still come back here, and the Crystal Lizard is back. I can't remember if I've said at this point, so Crystal Lizards will respawn for every boss you have defeated. So right now we have defeated two bosses in World 1, which means if we come back, if we reload the area and come back, this cre crystal lizard will come back again. Then he won't. When we kill the next boss in World 1, then it will respawn as well. So crystal lizards will respawn based on the boss number of bosses you have defeated in that area. Just a funky little mechanic. So we've got ourselves back. We've got some more materials from the crystal lizard. We're now going to go back to the Nexus. Send our hard stones. Well, I'd send all of our materials. Any dragon shields that we got picked up. Let's repair. I can forge weapons for you. If you can, upgrade your bow to level 6. However, I don't have the two extra hard larges. But plus 5 is still where we need it to be, so that's fine. Um, the difference between plus 5 and 6 isn't huge yet. Uh, because our strength's at 30, we're doing good regardless. How am I doing for time? Lovely. Go to World 2, the Smithing Grounds. Now this is super important. So firstly, check your tendency. Now, although the Prime Demon exists, and although this looks like it's pure black, we are not in pure black tendency. We are... 5%. What we don't have is these little red flecks appearing. 
It's very deceptive. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a stone of ephemeral eyes. And we're going to die one more time to make sure. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of stuff. So again, we're going to reload the area to refresh the tendency. Now this is a very important mechanic that we're going to take full advantage of. Okay, there we go. Now I've got my red flicks moving. So it looks like little red embers. Hopefully you can see that. But now we've got these little red dots, the bright red dots that are floating around. That is the key difference between nearly pure black and actual pure black tendency. Now, the important thing here, we are not going to use an arch stone until we are done with all of our pure black bits. We are going to do a number of things that are going to increase our world tendency. We're going to kill the prime demon. That's going to give us plus two to our tendency. We're going to defeat a boss. That's going to give us plus three to our tendency. Uh, we are going to defeat a red phantom. That's also going to increase our tendency. Um, and we don't want any of that to actually take effect until we have completed our gold coin farm as well. And the phantom won't appear unless we are in pure black tendency, which is why I had to make sure that we had those red fleckers going. So a lot to do and dying is fine because as I showed in world one, dying does not uh, impact the tendency. It is only if you warp, even if you warp to the same location, that is what will change your tendency. So, so long as we do not use an arch stone, we can touch it. So after the boss, so we get our boss holes, but we cannot use an arch stone as that will change our tendency. I hope that makes sense. But yep, we're going to come down all the way down and we're going to pop this prime demon for a colorless demon soul. Immediately store the colorless demon soul. Grab the stone of ephemeral eyes. And now we're going to go back. Make sure you're running so that you don't get hit by the rocks. And now back. And you'll see we have a new enemy. Because we're in pure black, we get red phantom enemies. There are two red phantom enemies here that we are going to deal with. That was the first. Ow. Now, because we're in pure black, Enemies have more health and deal more damage, but in return, the drop rate is improved, and more importantly, they drop more souls. Uh, oh, going the wrong way. There we go. 
come down here. Get your bow ready, as there is a fat official. The one that we got the legs from previously. Uh, I'm going to switch to normal arrows for this guy. So disturbing. Them rubbing their bellies. I think that's what the idea is though. Enter the fog. Pop the cart to the right, grab a stone of ephemeral eyes. Onward. Once you get to the top here, start to walk instead of run. Shield up just to play extra safe. Oh, there we go. This guy's going to drop a boulder. And a red phantom at the end. We don't need this item for this build, but it's a good item to show you where it is in case you ever do want to play a sorcery build. You definitely want to come around here and grab the Chris Blade. So the Chris Blade, if you have it in your offhand, it increases the magical damage you deal by 10 or 20%, but that increases the more levels you put into it. So when it's level 5, it does a bigger buff. However, it does also increase the magical damage you take. So just worth noting. However, we're not playing a magic build, so we're just going to set that storage. Right. I don't know why I always pick this up, because I never need it, because it's a spider sewn chunk. It's just something that I've always done. Right, make sure you have your thief ring equipped, bow, long arrows, and I'm going to make sure my precision aim is my preference of hold, as I'm going to be doing some rolling. We are now going to defeat the armor spider boss. Because we have the thief ring on, we're going to come to this second chain here. And at this distance, we can easily walk any of its fireball attacks. If it does its trio attack, it won't hit us at all. And all I'm doing is I'm rolling the web when it puts its tail up, as all it does is it kind of slows you, and it gives you like an encumbered state. It's not the end of the world, because we have enough stats that we can easily take a hit or two. If you are finding it too difficult, just take a few steps back. Uh, at which point you've got more time to react. Let me switch to a normal arrow and... Oh. Yeah. If you're finding it too difficult, just come back to where this man is here and do the same thing. You have long arrows. Now warrior soul. Spider step chunk. Set storage. Okay, now this is so important. Remember, we need to keep this in pure black tendency. But on the flip side, we don't want to lose the tendency progress that we've got because of boss and that we're nearly at pure white tendency. So, touch the archstone. That activates it. We get the pure spider stone and the hard demon soul. Send the spider stone. Keep, keep the hard demon stone, uh, the soul on you. Do not rest at the archstone. Do not just do not travel. Do not rest. 
Instead, come here. A couple arrows in this crystal lizard. Ow, thank you. Grab the goodies, and you'll see these exploding carts. Well, you'll see these carts with these lights on them. These are exploding carts. So make sure you are always running when you go past them, and that way you don't have to worry about getting blown up. Right, before we step into this next area, we're going to replace the cling ring with our providential ring. And I'll well, keep the thief on. You are welcome to, at this point, you can equip your Ring of Avarice to get some more souls as well. Uh, am I going to do it? Yeah, let's just do that as well. Might as well. Might as well maximize. We're farming at this point. So this is the gold coin farm. So from here, there's a fat official. One bop. And the safest way... <laughs> Bop him, first time you defeat him, he's going to drop the official's clothes. Very important, so make sure we put that in the storage with the rest. So the only thing we're missing now is the official's hat. I can't remember what this item is. I know it's not an important one. All go of guidance. Turn the handle, and immediately you're going to try and get off the lift. There we go. And this is the last step of our farming. How we're going to die. Once the lift reaches the bottom, you're now going to step off the edge. And this is how we're going to cheese the tendency and keep it in pure black. Because we have not rested at an arch stone, we do not change our tendency. So we're still in pure black, despite the fact that the next time we load this area and ourselves, we're going to be much closer to pure white. So. We will be ignoring these enemies soon, but just while I'm defeating the Crystal Lizard... We're going to uh, bop those two pickaxes. Okay, priority one, get back your souls. So there you go. And we're going to keep doing this until we get a gold coin dropped. And we must keep... We're keeping pure black, A, because of the drop rate, and B, because we need to spawn a red phantom invader after we've finished doing this farm. Bop. <laughs> Prioritize getting back our souls. Dying is not a problem. Losing the souls, that's extra farming we'd have to do to get them back. No gold coin. Over we go. Can I get the gold coin? video. Should be able to. It is a low drop rate item. Uh. 
Onward. Go, Colin. Nope. Now, what I tend to find is if you don't get a gold coin here, then later on uh, a fat official will not drop you a gold coin. If you do get a gold coin here, for some reason it seems almost guaranteed that when you do World 1 3, the fat official drops another one. Nearly every time, it seems. But, as I said, it only seems to happen to me if I farmed a normal gold coin first. Nope. But we must get a gold coin as we need to trade it with uh, Sparkly the Crow for a ring. And we need all the rings in the game. It is a trophy. Slash achievement. He wasn't going to give me a gold coin that time anyway, surely. <laughs> That's why you prioritize getting your souls, just so that in the event that you do get hit, it's not the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world anyway. Worst case, you just farm up to keep up with the number of souls that I've got. I even rolled. I was going to say, you should be dead. Gold coin, please. Looks like I'm on the more unlucky side of things, so maybe it's going to be a 20 minute gold coin farm. We'll see, I mean it's only been 5 minutes, so... Ow. Took that one like the
couple more attempts before I need to end this video. I would like to get the cold, the cold coin, the gold coin in this video sorted. Side, this is also farming full moon grasses, which are really good. So it's not the end of the world having to kill this fat official a few times for that reason alone as well. So uh, I do kind of wish that they had some kind of fixed percentage so once you have defeated the same enemy X amount of times it guarantees you the drop because it does get a little tedious but if it's like right if you defeat this fat official ten times in a row then it guarantees you the gold coin drop and even if they made it so it's like it only works once so that way you can't farm gold coins if that's what they were concerned about and similarly with the pure blade stone that we need from the red eye skeleton Okay, well, we will continue this farm in the next video then. Next video, we will start the farm and we'll be able to finish all of World 2. So that's not the end of the world. Unless it really screws me. Alrighty. Stepping away from the archstone. Don't want to touch it. Okay, viewers, thank you so much. Hopefully you are finding this guide useful and enjoyable to follow and you're having a great journey on your way to your platinum of demon souls please do please please like and subscribe if you haven't done those things it means the world to me and you mean the world to me any questions you have anything that i can do to help you feel free to put into the comments i can't wait to see you all in the next video thank you so much and bye for now